how they get some sentries delivered, but... Spots okay. their heroes, Lanham goes invis, and they continue to 5-man. And this is the time to 5-man, really. The enemy team will pressure them when Ravage is down. Yeah. And Ravage will be up and still a minute until that baby comes up. When do VP buy a gem? I feel like they could have bought one even uh, already. Yeah, to they, deal with Lanham. I think they could. I mean, I and don't just think, take vision control. I don't think FNG needs an X to be really useful this game. I think he's fine just with his items, as long as he's participating in kills. And it's a different way to play Ancient Apparition, but I think it's an okay way to play him. You just go with your team. You use Ice Vortex, and you really amplify your team's damage. And if your position is good enough. You won't get caught. And there's the BKBs picked up. Lena as well as Razor. Ravage now becomes very hard. And at the same time, Blink is picked up. Yeah, usually Tide hopes to hit that window a little earlier so he can uh, abuse the Blink Dagger before there's magic immunity. And he's doing well, honestly. Like 24 minutes, 2 1 and 4. His Blink Dagger is not delayed, but because he got it after the mech, the other heroes that can farm faster than them grab their BKBs. Yeah. So if they pop BKB and he's only ra able to ravage maybe one or two supports, it's going to really change how the team fight goes. Because Tide is pretty bad after Ravage. He doesn't do that much. And against Razor, Razor's still pretty good for damage output. Doesn't have to worry about getting his damage reduced. Yeah. Best you can hope for is Anchor Smash, but... All right, Wanam, what's he working on here? I guess he's going to go pipe. He's got a ring of regen as well as a cloak. I suppose it could be a fourth staff. Nope, there's the second ring. So looks like they will take heed to what you were mentioning, where they split the uh, the mech pipe. Pipe in BKBs, and then they don't die. I, I and, like the way Ehome are itemizing here, man. I think it's the right idea. And even G's very possibly going to just go BKB. Like, they are playing the full Chinese playstyle right now, which is five men in BKBs. They're going to blink forward. They're going to orc it on top of ROTK. It doesn't get his blink off, and... That looks like a dead hero. Down. Not much the Tusk could do there. In the wrong place at the wrong time. A little bit of space creation, though, for Lena to pressure the Tier 2 in the bottom. They will force out a Glyph. And it looks like VP won't really mount much of a defense here, except for the Ice Blast. CTY will get nailed by it. But he's got to be a little scared about that. Does he get that. this tower? Yeah, he's got a lot of reinforcements nearby. They know where he is. They're thinking about blinking forward. VP coming in. Looks like they will choose to defend now. Will they check him on the right? We'll see. CTY hiding in the tree on taking a look at Dire they Vision. Ping, they keep pinging there. They know he's over there. Yeah. If they blink on top of him and he just dies. Ice Shard oh, scouted out. Oh, oh they're still pinging like crazy. I don't think it oh, That was his team. They're saying, get out of there. Run. Yeah. Run. They do deward the ward. Do they have a gem now? They do. It's a gem on FNG. Great purchase here. Okay. He's gone for some stat levels as well. Two currently just increases HP without needing money to be able to do that. I like and instead, this translate the money into the gem. Value points in Cold Feet and Chilling Touch. Max out the Ice Vortex, then just go all stats after that. Exactly. So very, very good build for this stage of the game. I, I kind of like the Arcane Boots. Normally, I, I'm a big critic of Ancient Apparition Arcanes because he doesn't need it to get a big mana pool. But in this case, he's really there to spam the hell out of Ice Vortexes. The slow is big. It's 30%. These things last for 16 seconds, and they're on a 4-second cooldown. You can get up to 4 down in a battlefield. And if the fight isn't too is fairly static, that's a huge deterrence to your opponents moving and chasing after you. It's kind of like a counter to track, really, if you think about it. Yeah, that's a good point. E home grouped up is four in the mid lane here. They don't have their Lena with them, but they see Illidan. He is tracked. Ice shards fall a little bit short. No blink in sight for Rubik. No. So his positioning is is a little tough still. Yeah, he's pretty broke. Both the supports on the dire side having trouble farming here. It's because they're five many. <laughs> yep. There's only so much you can do in these positions. But a smoke from E Home. And a BKB picked up by the Gyrocopter. So I think VP's okay with this fight then. It all comes down to who initiates first. If it's a Blink Ravage, their team's a little spread. There's the initiation. Will he Blink Ravage? He does. He catches three, but not the best Ravage. Yeah, all the BKBs are on here. Illidan now. He's the victim of the winner's curse. Snowball across onto Lil. ROTK still alive, but maybe not for long. Sonic Wave from Quapper on the backside will finish off the Bounty Hunter. Ice Blast comes in to connect on a few. ROTK will get up. shattered by G. His BKB is still on, though, about to expire. Oh, he's in trouble now. Yules to set up. CTY connects with the LSA. The damage is there. It's a two for two. Ehome getting some cleanup is now Illidan going in. Uh-oh, the Plasma Field doing some damage, but a buyback from the Queen of Pain. I like this a lot. He can clean up big time. Going after Razor, there's the Anchor Smash first. Gush in three seconds. I think there's no way that Razor escapes this here. Now there's the say, Gush. Though, oh oh, oh Phobos needs to be careful. Now in comes G. Looks like uh, the Winter Wyvern was able to TP home. Nothing G could do about it, but will jump onto Yang. Finds the cleanup kill there. So a long extended fight, but it looks like Ehome get the big net worth uh, advantage because of that buyback on the co-op. 
Now, he only gets 40% of the gold that he would normally get there. All gold earnings reduced by 60%. So despite it saying 600, he only got a little of that back, but it does still give them some space on the map. Mm -hmm. I thought he might be able to get more than just one kill there. But I, it seemed like he went south when he bought back. He did. He went he for the Winter for Wyvern. Hero. I didn't follow my camera on that side, but he, he was didn't following get him. Winter Wyvern who TP'd out. So Yeah, so that's a pretty big mistake there. I'm guessing that he used Glimmer Cape or something like that. But he wasn't able to get the kill on that, and because of that, he lost the other two. Okay. So, things resetting a little bit here. 9 to 17 as VP gets some more kills up on the board, but... Only about a 1,500 net worth lead and experience... Or, oh, that's for Ehome, pardon me. And a small experience lead for VP. Still a very even game, all things considered. Only Tier 1 towers have been destroyed. And only on the side of VP, actually all towers still standing for Ehome. Yeah, I think that fight was just a little sloppy sloppy for VP. I think DK Phobos reacted to it correctly. Someone's initiated on your team. You immediately need to blink where you think the rest of their team is and you need to ravage. And he did do that, but the problem was his team wasn't quite close enough to follow up on it. So from a reactionary standpoint where they initiated on you, I think that was pretty good for VP. That didn't go bad. They kind of, I think they won that fight um, despite the buyback. And uh, they is, just need to initiate. What instead. is Phobos buying here? He's got a point booster. Um, is that an Octarine to lower the, the cooldown? You know, I think that's pretty cool. I, I've never seen somebody do that before on Tidehunter. Nor I. But I mean, it's definitely not an Ags. I think definitely not a Bloodstone. So it yeah, must be the Octarine. It must be the Octarine. Um, Certainly not a Scotty. It's a lot of HP as well, which is kind of cool because he's got four levels in Kraken Shell, obviously. So every 450 HP, you remove a debuff. So it's a very low chance of him getting stunned. Mm -hmm. He's got a bigger mana pool. He could get Refresher afterwards. I still think the Refresher build is probably better, but you can't really afford Refresher and Mech. And he's looking to initiate bot. They've got the vision. Yep. He spots DDC, though. There's the Orchid. Blinking forward. Ravage oh. catches four. Huge Ravage. Quap Bolt as well. Ice Blast comes through. But the snowball, it resets things. They're all still alive. Yang with the BKB on will try to press forward here. Now they all come out somehow, some way. Ehome have everybody still up. They're going to go back in onto Phobos. Yang in the front lines, very tanky still. They bring down the Tidehunter first. CTY maybe in just a little bit too deep, taking a lot of damage, but will BKB. Now G with his BKB on, focuses on the Yang. The snowball helps reset again. Locks it in in place. There's the Walrus Punch. It's Virtus Pro on the back foot. Somehow, Purge, how have Ehome done this? They're going to chase down Lil. They'll get yet another track kill. It's a four for nil. No one dying on the side of Ehome. No buybacks deployed yet. G, the lone survivor for Virtus Pro. I can't believe that happened. It Just, was all the snowball to reset. Yeah, it, it actually debuffed the AI spots. It might hit a couple. Doesn't get the Razor. Yeah. I think it also stopped the Quapult from doing a lot of damage. They got hit by the Ravage, but the Snowball came right as the Sonic Wave flew through, and I'm pretty sure it was completely nullified on everyone in the Snowball. Those two heroes should have 100% died. That Ravage was perfect. The team follow-up was immediately afterwards, but the Snowball just bought them time, and that was such sick play from ROTK. He read that fight. He pulled them together. They were the focus, and they completely wiped VP. And maybe the rest of VP didn't quite go as crazy as not uh, aggressive enough as they needed to because after the ravage the fight just looked over and it seemed like once it wasn't over the rest of the team was sitting back a little bit so i feel like maybe vp didn't commit hard enough to trying to secure those kills maybe they read that oh the fight's over they snowballed but that that went completely opposite to how i thought the, it was going to there was also that chaos factor of since they jumped in the snowball it looked like they all died at first because they just so disappeared too. off yeah. the screen it took me a moment and then as soon as i saw the snowball yeah we realized that now set up onto phobos but it's cty on the back foot he'll scoot away lanham nearby and they will be able to live no problemo but yeah it's just those weird little visual things when you just go wait what happened and if that happened to us surely it happened to the players on vp as well tusk Barely blinking back as he gets hit by the Ice Blast. We'll try to TP home, hope. and yeah, G's got no way to interrupt it. Okay. If he, if he didn't get that blink off, if that A ult would have hit a second earlier, he would have had that kill. Yeah, definitely. I think so. Uh, with Orchid and a couple nukes. No ult, obviously, but would help a lot. He's uh, about half the way towards his eggs. Actually, only needs about 1,200. Once he grabs that, he's going to be using his ultimate a lot less conservatively. Yeah. So Bounty Hunter, he does have a Hood of Defiance, I think. Didn't he already pick up two Rings of Regen? Where the, where the hell did they go? He did. All right. Uh, Ravage is up, though. So it looks like uh, VP is going to fight here. They need to do call down after Ravage. That's going to help a lot. Okay. Quap's showing everything. right now. They'll see if they reach forward on her. 
So this is Dire Vision right now. They've only got one ward around the Roche pit. They ping out the Tusk. That's the only one they see. The rest of Ehome hiding in the tree line here. They C2I, will break C2I's the smoke. On Yang in the front line. Oh, he's got the BKB on. Winner's Curse onto Illidan. It goes right through the BKB. This Gyrocopter's in a lot of trouble. Rubik dies off to the backside to CTY. Now Illidan down for the count. He has a buyback. Ravage comes out from DK Phobos. It'll get the Tusk, but there's just no follow-up. It was too defensive. They can't interrupt him on the TP out. He'll live, but G. Caught by the LSA as he tries to blink. A track kill can they get another one nope he will just barely live unless they can chase him down yeah he's and gonna be can. fine okay all right welcome mainstream hello, this hello. is a seriously important game if you guys haven't been paying attention both of these teams are fighting for their top four spot in group b mm -hmm. e and it's a close one ehome looked very strong in game number one and here in game two vp fighting for the top four this is what it all comes down to purge it's been a very close game so far. E-Home just recently pulling far ahead. Ice Blast will connect on the Roche pit, but VP just can't contest this. Ravage is down. Sonic Wave is down. This will be a Roche going the way of E-Home. So, yeah, very even mid-game. Pretty quiet farming until the recent bout of team fighting. Pipe on the way. We'll take a look at the items here just so you all can get acquainted with the current state of this match. You know, if you guys caught, if you missed the last fight, what basically happened was CTY came from far behind in the team fight, and VP was looking for the other main group. If they would have been able to spot CTY first, they could have just completely blown him up to start things off. Phobos getting spotted in the jungle, actually. This is pretty dangerous because the rest of the heroes are semi in the area. He's oh, just going to sure can. Can't get there in time. No, it's, it's such short range now. Yeah. It's very difficult to get in range. CTY fishing as well in the mid lane. He's the one carrying the Aegis now, so not afraid to be a little bit aggressive if an opportunity arises. He's, wow, he's got so much farm. 4k gold, plus his Aghanims. Wow. So he just solo killed the Rubik very, very easily earlier. But the problem is that both teams have been playing super safe five man the whole game because neither of them wants to lose this one. Mm -hmm. And because of that, Lil has much less items than he normally does. Yeah, look at this Rubik. He's got Urn, Arcane Boots, and still no progression towards that Blink Dagger. Very unfortunate for him. The Ancient Apparition... In a similar state right now, they're at the bottom pa yeah. of the pack for net worth by a pretty big margin. They've been holding steady, whereas for Ehome, both of their supports have been on the up and up. A lot of that coming from the track goal. Yeah, I'm sure that makes a big difference there. VP going to try to take at least tier one, one tier one tower here before they back off and go for the racks defend. They don't have Ravage yet. 16 seconds cooldown on that one, and Ehome's happy to go high ground. All right, there is no glyph either on cooldown for another 20 oh, seconds. Oh, in big killed. trouble. Can they finish him off? They can. He does have a buyback oh, here. Oh, Solo Guna, though. Uh-oh. 950 magic damage. That's going to be a huge thing to have they, in the next team fight, but... They may realize it was stolen as well. We'll see if they adjust their play style here. They'll mech up. They go right back onto the tower. Glyph up in about five seconds. Ilden may need to burn the buyback here. Refresher. Ravage is also cooled down. Refresher picked up by Lena. Great pickup. Oh, boy, this is scary. She doesn't have the mana pool to use it quite yet now. Oh, it's, okay, it's way back at the base. Never mind. They won't need it for this siege. Tower's gone down. They've got the Glyph now. VP can still make a hold here, but... Do they sack the barracks and not use the buyback? Oh, he Ravage the completely Ravage. whiffed from Phobos. Oh, no. It's a disaster from Virtus Pro. Now comes the BKB for Yang. Sonic oh. Wave from Quap. Oh, man. They just shredded. This is scary. CTY goes down but comes right back to life. This should be at least a lane of barracks for E-Home. That was not the time to whiff the Ravage. Oh, he no. He pressed it before he blinked. I, I looked down, and I don't think there was a damage source that hit him or anything. No, because it, it was Bounty Hunter kind of close to him, but he has no way to do damage from that far away. And we saw it from Ohio earlier, just not shift queuing properly on his Earthshaker. It's very similar style. It just happens occasionally. but It's such a small thing, because if he hesitates a little bit after he blinks, then they have a much better chance of getting their BKBs off. They did still kill the Aegis on Lina, but you just can't make that mistake. It's such a big mistake when you're defending. Okay. So... Anything else here progression-wise? Phobos, I guess worth mentioning here to all the new viewers joining us that he has a soul booster probably working towards the Octarine core. Not a build that Purge or myself have